Hey what's up guys, it's Manu here from Android.com. If you guys regularly watch Android Auto videos, by now you must have realized that there's something different in today's setup. That's right, I don't have my Mac here, I have something different. So this is the ASUS ZenBook Pro Duo that I've already unboxed here in my channel. In case you guys didn't check out that video, check it out, I'll have a link for it down below in the description. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing my review of this after using it for quite some time with all of you. So if you guys are excited for this video, if you are new to my channel, smash that subscribe button right now. Share this video with all of your friends. Let's get started with my full review of the groundbreaking device from ASUS, the ZenBook Pro Duo. I can actually remember when ASUS actually launched the ZenBook Pro Duo at Computex and uh, at that time after seeing all the coverage online, I thought to myself, yeah, that looks like a pretty good uh, product. But now that I've actually used the ZenBook Pro Duo, I think it's a really great product that has a lot of potential moving forward. So I'm going to be sharing my experiences about this with all of you. So let's go ahead and talk about it. If you actually show the ZenBook Pro Duo to someone, it's quite possible that they might tell that this is one of the most innovative things that they have seen in a while. The main reason for that is not having the secondary display. It's how ASUS has actually gone ahead and implemented some amazing features to that to make the maximum out of it. See, dual screens aren't new to laptops. We have seen dual screen implementations before, but most of those were half-based implementations this one looks like a pretty solid implementation of the dual screen. And when talking about that implementation, it's not just the screen that's there that will let you access a few settings or tweak a few things here and there. This is like a completely different screen. This is an actual second screen we are talking on this laptop. Apple actually unveiled the touch bar with the Mac, but how many of you actually use it? I personally don't even use it that much. So for me to get my hands on a device like this where it actually has a good implementation of dual screens, I was really happy and blown away with all of the features. I'm not going to dig into the specs much because I've already spoken about all the specs of this product in my unboxing. So if you guys want to check out all the specs in detail and see what you get in the box when you pick up the ZenBook Pro Duo, you can check out that video. I'll have a link for that down below in the description like I mentioned before. One of the main reasons why I personally like the dual screen implementation on this is because the main display is also a 4K display and so is the secondary display. So you can get a lot of work done with all of those pixels and it's really cool, especially if you're playing some hardcore games. This machine has the power to power it all. And not only that, this machine also has the capabilities to run even hardcore applications, which I will talk about in a bit. The main display on the ZenBook Pro Duo is a 15.6 inch touchscreen OLED that is Pantone validated and a color gamut that covers 100% of the demanding DCI P3 spectrum which means it's extremely color accurate. So the colors that you're seeing here are true to life. So if you see a blue on this, that means it's the real blue. And because it's an OLED display, it also has a wide 178 degree viewing angle that's really great. Another thing that I noticed is that the primary display on the ZenBook Pro Duo is glossy, whereas the secondary screen on this has a matte finish to it. I actually enjoyed the matte screen, but I do have to admit the colors on this primary screen were top notch. So for designing work, I think I would be using that more often than using the secondary screen. So I will talk more about how I personally use this in a bit. If it was up to me, I would personally use the primary screen for all of my graphic heavy work and the secondary screen as an assistant. Let's say maybe if I'm using Adobe Lightroom, I can have all of my pictures on the top part of the screen, but at the bottom, I can just have the grid of pictures that I can select from and view on the primary screen. The same goes when it comes to video editing. Maybe I can have the full video playing up here on the main screen so that I can see it completely and at the bottom I can actually have the timeline so I can easily scroll around and uh, check it out and edit accordingly. So it's a pretty good implementation but not only that I even used it while gaming 
So while gaming, this thing does a pretty good job uh, managing a lot of things even when it's given a heavy load. So let's say I'm playing some game in the primary screen, I can still use the secondary screen to watch a YouTube video, a film or something else or if I want to refer some document. Even if you use something like Adobe Photoshop quite often, you're gonna really love this screen for its color accuracy and the performance that this laptop can push it. So it's really great for you to use this for a lot of creative work. So basically this device is a creative professional dream computer. Sometimes I just want this machine to run macOS because I can't even imagine the capabilities that this machine would have if it ran macOS. Because I can really get even more productive than Windows if I had that. You guys know that I'm a Mac person mostly, so maybe it's just me. But uh, if you guys are into Windows, right now this implementation is quite good. But just imagine what the future holds for a device like this. Right now we have two separate displays, but with flexible displays and foldable screens coming out, maybe we can have, maybe Asus will have a foldable or flexible display right over here. So we can just have that seamless experience here. Uh, on our laptop and just imagine oh, the time when the keyboard will completely disappear right once the keyboard is gone it's gonna be all screen on this so that's gonna be the dream that's gonna be the future and that's where asus is heading with this device so i'm really excited to see what else they'll be bringing out in the future so um for now if you're gonna live in the moment, this is one of the best uh, dual screen laptop implementations that you can go ahead and buy right now to get your work done. So overall, pretty great stuff from Asus when it comes to the display and the dual screen implementation. Like I mentioned before, the implementation of Asus with the screen pad plus the secondary display is one of the main features why this laptop really stands out. Asus has actually provided a suite of extremely useful functions that improve your productivity and it really adds to the experience. There's actually an action menu that is built in. So if you go ahead and uh, click on the title bar of any application window it, and if you start dragging it, a set of three icons will quickly appear and you can switch between either of those. The first option there is the app switcher which will maximize the window on the opposite screen. Then we have the add function which will add the app of the window to the launcher for faster access in the future. And then there's view max which is my favorite thing which will span the window across both the main display and the screen pad plus which is great for viewing larger documents or even if you want to check out the map it's really really good. I even use this sometimes to scroll a Word document or Google Chrome browser window. So overall, I think I had a pretty great experience with that. Another good thing is the window management features of Microsoft Windows is still baked into it and Asus has just built all of these tools on top of that. So you can run even three applications down below in the secondary screen two applications on the main screen and if you just plug in more displays so you can get more work done with just this machine so this is gonna be the hub and uh, the best part is this machine has the power to run all of it. Now let's talk about the ports and connectivity of this. First we have the charging port on the left hand side along with the HDMI port and a USB 3 port along with the fan vent and on the right hand side we have another USB 3 port, the fan grills, a 3.5 mm headphone jack and a Thunderbolt 3 capable USB type C port. I think Asus could have put in a SD card slot on this machine because it's specially targeted at creative professionals because I personally use SD cards on a day to day basis quite a lot. So I would have really appreciated if this device had the SD card slot. Maybe next time around Asus if you can put SD card slot, this would be the ideal system. The keyboard on this Zenbook Pro Duo is also quite good, especially thanks to this wrist rest that it has. So I really enjoy typing on this and I really appreciate the numeric number pad that appears on the side here on the trackpad itself. So ASUS has actually done quite a lot of work here. Uh, they actually had a briefing for us where they actually briefed about all of these devices some time ago. So at that point, they actually went ahead and explained to us the technicalities behind uh, this machine, how they put all of this together. They even showed us inside of this machine and what they have done to improve this machine and how they have basically put this entire thing together. And it was really cool to see how ASUS actually pulled it all off. 
the audio system on this is tuned by Harman Kardon and uh, for me personally the sounds were quite good but I would have uh, preferred if this machine actually had uh, louder speakers especially when I was playing games I really wish uh, this machine was able to put out more sounds uh, so at that point I quickly went ahead and connected to my Bluetooth uh, speaker and got the maximum out of it but I would have really preferred if this machine came with uh, more louder speakers. Maybe next time around Asus can improve on that. Another cool thing that I enjoyed on the Zenbook Pro Duo is the face recognition features that this machine has built into it. So even though this doesn't have any type of fingerprint scanner, that wasn't a big deal for me because uh, this machine was able to recognize my face and Asus even told me that it's quite secure. It was really fast, so it was able to capture my face without much trouble. So I was able to get into Windows without wasting much time. All I had to do was hit on that power button, wait for the device to power on since it's already running. Some powerful SSDs inside. The machine was really fast to respond to all other things. So overall, with the power of Windows Hello as well, the face recognition on this was really great to use. And the best part was it even worked in the dark. Now talking about the practicality of a device like this, uh, I mean, I personally see myself using this as a desktop replacement, to be frank with you, because at 2.5 kilograms, uh, the Zenbook Pro Duo is definitely not a light laptop. And the best part is for you to make the maximum out of this machine, for you to get the best performance, you really have to have it plugged on. When I sometimes played games without having it plugged on, the games were a little bit laggy. Maybe you can tweak the settings to get that right. But I personally got the best performance of this when it was plugged on. Another cool thing on this laptop is its fast charging capability. So you can get 50% charge in just 15 minutes with this charger. 